Rangers started in 1912 in Newcastle and it was started by primarily by a firm of solicitors. And almost as a, as a byproduct, they set up a small family residential property company. Range is uh, the largest listed residential company in Britain. And in terms of properties that we own, we own about 15,000 in Britain, 7,000 in Germany, and we manage on behalf of ourselves and other people, about 40,000 in total. The business started to expand in the 1970s through a series of acquisitions by portfolios of residential properties for people like British Coal, uh, British Rail, English China Clays, Reckon Coleman, big philanthropic employers who were deciding that they didn't want to own residential property anymore. Next year our centenary is also falling at the same time as the, the Olympic Games and the Paralympic Games. And so we're sponsoring three Paralympians. Uh, they come from the northeast of England, so that reflects the genesis of Granger coming from this part of the country. And it'd be fantastic if one or not more of them brings home a gold medal for us. One of the key features of Granger is its adaptability. It's been able to move with the times and to react to those. It took advantage of the market at the right time. We did the acquisition of Bradford Property Trust, a business double our size. We're residential now and within that we're looking at residential development. Um, we've got equity release. Which we started from scratch just five or six years ago and is now the largest of its type in the UK. We've got sort of the strategic land uh, and regeneration. We've got sort of public-private partnerships. We've also got Prime, which is stuff in central London. We are bigger than we've ever been, and, and with that comes a lot of responsibility, bigger portfolios, and having to make decisions that stand up at the end of the day. We recognise that when we take on an asset, the way we drive value is how we take it in, how we manage it, and how we extract value on exit. In five years, I think we'll, we'll be doing the same thing we're doing now, probably better and more of it. 25 years down the line, I think we're going to be at a different company. When I joined Granger, we owned something like £120 million worth of property, and we employed less than 40 people. And as we stand today, we own over £2 billion worth of property and employ 270 people. I've worked at Granger for 18 years. I've been a rent collector, I've been a property manager, I've been in the refurbishment team. I look after all the acquisitions and the asset management for the North. This acquisition was part of an acquisition that we purchased from the Duke of Northumberland. We're caring landlords, we like to treat our tenants as clients, that we want to engage them in the work that we do. If we want anything done, obviously. You've you got know, to phone them, late and they phone them and they come and do it. It's also about the asset management of those properties as well, to ensure that we retain the properties in a good standard of repair. We're taking decisions on when we spend capital works on the property and, and how that benefits the property and its return and also on the rental income as well. They did put me a new kitchen in, a new bathroom in. It just went like clockwork. I said it would be nice to have an open space for the stove to go and I got my stove. <laughs> We've owned properties since the early 60s that are still on our books and it's highly likely that it will be the same tenants that were there in the 60s are the tenants today. This is my mother and father. They moved into this premises around about 1927 approximately. And they lived in here all their lives till they both died. And then my husband George took over the property of this house and I've lived here the rest of my life. I think that longevity, it's a feature of our tenancy. Um, it's also a feature of our business. It's a feature of our outlook, the way that we, we take a long-term view to our assets, to our people and to our strategy. This is a accommodation called Mariner's Cottages where we own 39 Grade 2 listed cottages. You couldn't have one of these cottages unless you went to sea. And the captains lived on this side and the ratings lived on the other side and children would get a penny to come and tell the captain his ship was coming in. 
we purchased it uh, around about six years ago now. These are little gems and they were starting to deteriorate till Greenger came along. We first took over the, the estate at Mariners. Um, there was a considerable amount of external repairs needing to do, and not just what we wanted, but what the tenants wanted. We've got new windows, we'll get our repairs done. Brilliant, brilliant. The Mariners always would just do the outside of the house, but Granger do inside now. This is one of our prime estates that we want to spend money on, not only to keep tenants in the cottages, the estate to be sought after by people coming onto the estate, but also to increase the value of the properties going forward. We cover from Nottingham down to Bath, over to Bristol, all of South Wales, and back up the M5. The Mulpool Estate has just undergone its centenary celebrations, similar to Granger. There's 160 units which we manage still. Originally I was in the top one, but I developed a heart disease. The bottom flat then became available and I spoke to Granger and said, look, this is the situation. Can I swap the top flat for the bottom one? And they were great. They said, yeah, no problem. My grandfather, back in the 30s, one of the first on the estate to have a car and to be able to put up a, you know, a garage at the side of the house. We're selling some of the garage sites off. Jeff has a few cars over different sites and what we are trying to do is locate them all together and eventually move him onto one site. Here is our old estate office where we were originally based before we moved premises and just to the side is the tennis court. Behind there is the Morpool Hall which consists of a large hall, small hall, skittle alley and it's used for various occasions and functions such as birthday parties, yoga and we've also got a rifle club there and um, we practice most days. They just love living here, they've lived here all their lives, you'll find that there's generations of families here, so the grandparents are here, the parents are here, the children are here, they don't want to move and I don't blame them. The tenants are very proud of where they live, the community spirit keeps the values up and keeps people wanting to buy on the estate, which is, is a benefit to us. We bought a, a large acquisition from the Ideal Benefits Society um, in Birmingham. And, and within that portfolio there was a large 1920s block of flats. We did a large extensive refurbishment scheme on the block to bring it up to modern standards and that was to improve the tenants living conditions. It was obviously also to improve our capital and our rental returns on the block. The block and the units in the block they're all managed under the GRES 1 fund and Granger have retained the freehold so we manage that on a service charge basis. And also within the grounds of that development we brought in the development team who built an iconic modern block within that development. This is one of the uh, best estates we have in the portfolio. 317 units at uh, different sizes. There'll be people who've been here for five or ten years, there'll be people who've been here for five or six weeks uh, and people move around and that's a, a mixed community. We put a flat on the market, it goes. Now Granger's are running business. It's run properly. Before it was probably that regulated tenants didn't get a service that they should have done, but now they do. And we do complete refurbs, not the big ones, we leave that to the, the big contractors, but the smaller ones, we do in ours. Housing has been on the front page of, of broadsheets and uh, tabloids for years now. The reason it's been in the press is that there's not enough homes. I think the government that traditionally had, had a focus on home ownership is now uh, much more comfortable with the idea of people renting. There is a tendency towards um, more people renting for longer. And I think we'll see more and more of that over the next five to ten years. First time buyer's average age is now 37 years old. And for us that can be a good statistic because we do have rental properties obviously and that means that there is greater demand for the rental side of our business. I think that's very noticeable, particularly in the large metropolises where young professionals are often choosing not to get on the housing ladder. And in London, the percentage of people in the private rented sector who rent their own homes for a private landlord has shifted from 15% just five years ago to well over 20%. We have to house this, this set of in-between uh, people. And we've, uh, uh, we've recently announced a joint venture with the French construction company Bouygues, one of the largest construction companies in the world, uh, to go out and address that housing need. The government wanting homes to be built purely for rent. 
we've done uh, something that's quite innovative with one of the banks, with Lloyds Banking Group, where we, we manage some of their distressed residential portfolios on them, their behalf and get paid fees for doing that. What we offer them is the strategic view, delivery through property management and actually managing the sales process. Our proposition is not something new that we're creating for Lloyds. That is exactly what we do for Granger now. The scale and the experience that Granger has is pretty unique. Uh, and to be able to bring that to others, to partner up with them, uh, I, I think is a, is, a, is a good recipe for the future. We've got quite a large development down in Hampshire running at the moment, which is near a town called West Waterlooville, where there will be something like two and a half thousand properties. And it will be built with the view of the, the occupier in mind. Uh, and built with the view to maintaining and sustaining a community. Over my shoulder is the Louis Margaret Hospital and, and great affection for that because a lot of people were born there over the period of time. Also is the Cambridge Military Hospital which served the army and the civilians here for many years and people really, really care about it and they're very happy that Granger have made the commitment to bring it back into use. And this is sort of big regeneration project uh, down here at Aldershot. It's a development site for four and a half thousand houses and covers about 300 acres. We decided that we could actually release about a third of the original garrison footprint and that's facilitated the Aldershot urban extension uh, through uh, the MOD Defence Estates and Rushmore Borough Council. Granger reassured us very quickly that they've got the experience both in Hampshire and outside of Hampshire of creating communities. Aldershot Town Centre over the years has been sort of a poor relation to places like Guildford, Farnham and Fleet. They want a better mix of housing so that they can stay here but rather than move out of the borough if they want to go up the housing ladder. They want an improved infrastructure but also what they want to do is to make sure that the growth of the urban extension actually breathes life into the new retail sector. This will be the central part of, of the new community. It will feature uh, you know, a host of different facilities such as the shops, the restaurants, the a pub, the post office. They came with an outline of a plan but a real willingness to listen to what people had to say. And the other thing that struck me about them was they weren't into just building houses and moving on. In their words, they're into placemaking and are in it for the long haul. A marvellous thing about Granger is that they've actually been out and consulted with not only the residents, with councillors, with businesses and with shops, and, and everybody feels part of this new scheme. The thing that's quite important to us at this early stage is making sure that this development can help Aldershot as a town to prosper and that's on three levels, it's social, it's physical and it's economic. We like to, to break moulds, we like to be a bit unique and a bit different. This was an added value opportunity and I think we, we do that day in day out. Caroline House, got a facade of roughly 45 to 50 metres with 180 degree views over Hyde Park. We've always looked to, to sort of find new areas to pursue um, and so far we've succeeded really well. Granger has two assets, not just its bricks and mortar and its property, that's, that's the basic one. Its second asset is its people, its IT, its systems, its knowledge of how to operate. You are part of an organisation that is recognised as a leading expert. And I'd like to think that people could look at me and my career and where I've moved to and try and aspire to that. It's full of people that are really entrepreneurial and, and willing to, to push boundaries. No nonsense, uh, very honest, very straight. At any given time we could move into a new area of business or, or strike up a new deal. The fact that there are more households being created than there are houses being created and the the dynamics that that create in the housing market means a greater push towards rental rather than home ownership and Granger is big enough and flexible enough to be able to react to those changes and to capitalise on them. So it's how we actually do that over the next five years that is going to be a challenge but also primarily the opportunity for us.